Cyanogen is hitting a bunch more devices. Video game voice actors are a little bit up in arms and LG is keeping it classy. I'm Mark Burst, I'm a Techno Buffalo and this is the Buffalo Breakdown. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Let's break it down together as a team. First up, popular custom ROM Cyanogen has added support for a slew of budget devices, including, but not limited to, the Moto E from this year, the Moto G from this year, the Oppo R7, R7 Plus, R5 Plus, LG G3, HTC One M8 with dual SIMs, all kinds of great budget devices. Cyanogen says they're also working on adding other more modern devices, including the HTC M9, Galaxy S6, and LG G4. Pretty exciting stuff. If you are into the custom ROM community, you can check to see if your phone is supported at their official wiki, which you can find a link to in the comments and on the site. As the video game industry continues to explode, video game voice actors are looking for an adjustment in their compensation. SAG-AFTRA and their members are considering a strike to force publishers and studios to pay up. The union is voting on whether or not to strike until October 5th of this year, so whether or not their demands are going to be met is still up in the air. You can find more information about the possible strike and the effects it might have on your favorite games on the site and you can of course keep your finger on the pulse with the hashtag performance matters. The Meizu Pro 5 is now official and it is shipping with some interesting silicon. Instead of a MediaTek or Qualcomm processor, which is kind of what you might expect from Meizu, they have partnered with Samsung this time around. The Pro 5 is sporting the Exynos 7420, which if that sounds familiar, that's because that's the same processor you can find in the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. So we know that we can expect some pretty excellent performance. The lower end model of the Pro 5 is sporting 32 gigs of storage and three gigs of RAM for approximately 440 bucks USD. The high end model tops out at four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, a 5.7 inch 1080p display, fingerprint reader, 21 megapixel camera, dual SIM support, and of course, the port everyone loves to hate these days, USB-C. That one's gonna run you approximately $485, but unfortunately you're gonna have to import them if you want them here in the US as the Pro 5 is currently only slated for release in China. The LG Class is also official this week. The company's rare dive into an all-metal body comes in at $340 USD. It's not exactly flagship material, but it does seem to do a pretty great job of slotting into that budget market we've been talking so much about these days. The Class is packing a 5-inch 720p display, which is a little bit of a bummer, a Snapdragon 410, a 2500 milliamp hour battery, a 13 megapixel camera, two gigs of RAM, and 16 gigs of micro SD expandable storage. Plus it does run Android 5.1 Lollipop. It is currently only available in Korea, but it should hit the US and Canada very soon. For those of you who sided with Microsoft for this console generation, you'll be very excited to hear that the preview program is on the way for the Xbox One's new dashboard. That was one of my favorite things about owning an Xbox 360. Microsoft posted a great thorough tour of the new interface this week so you can feast your eyes on all the features that you'll be getting access to very soon. There is no release date just yet, but you can find all the details on how to join the preview program on the site. Finally, this week Google announced their event for next week on September 29th, and that's a Tuesday. So by the time I see you next, we will have our new Nexus devices, the 5X and 6P. Granted, there is not a whole lot left to the imagination after all the leaks, but I'm still really thrilled to see what my next phone is very likely to be. So make sure you tune in next week. We'll have all the details on those new devices for you. All right, Herders, that's it for the show this week. If you enjoyed it, you can hit that like button down below. And of course, you can hit that subscribe button if you're the kind of person who just can't resist pushing buttons, which I feel your pain for. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be kind to one another, and I will catch you in the next video.